for those committed to disability inclusion. With so many participants from all over the world, it is easy to forget to mention the backbone of global gatherings like these. Name new trusted partner organizations such as Enosh. So thank you, Enosh, for organizing this valuable partner channel session. And therefore, without further ado, I wish you all well and look forward to seeing you online. Over to you, Enosh. Thank you, Raza. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us from around the world to the first Zero Project session of the day on the subject of inclusive employment for people with psychosocial disabilities, opportunities, and barriers. My name is Liron David. I am the Policy and International Relations Chief Officer at Enosh, the Israeli Mental Health Association, a nonprofit organization based in Israel that provides community-based mental health services and promote the rights of people with psychosocial disabilities and their family members. We are honored to be a trusted partner of the Zero Project team and the Ethel Foundation. So thank you, Raza, for the introduction. COVID-19 had taught us that mental health is everyone's story. The uncertainty, unemployment rate, and financial and emotional struggles. But for many people with psychosocial disabilities, these barriers are daily experiences, whether it's COVID or not. We know that people with psychosocial disabilities are facing many barriers regarding the labor market. Among other are the social stigma that is associated with mental health issues, the lack of specific accommodations, and the absence of sufficient community-based support. In our discussion today, we will reflect on these issues from two main perspectives. What are the policies that we need to shape and how to develop good practices to implement these policies? With me today are eight panelists from around the world and Israel. Panelists, if you can please open your cameras so that the attendees and the audience in the website can see you. Thank you. So in our first session, section, uh, the policy section, we will hear from Mr. Jürgen Menze, Disability Inclusion Officer at the International Labor Organization. Ms. Noah Levy, National Coordinator of Vocational Services at the Mental Health Rehabilitation Department in the Israeli Ministry of Health. And Dr. Gabi Edmond Rick, Director of Research and International Issues at the Commission for Equal Rights of Persons with Disabilities in the Israeli Ministry of Justice. In the second part, we will focus on good practices and experiences from the, from the field. And we will have social worker Tal Rokach, professional manager of, an, of the employment services at Enosh, Israel. Shaha Shustatsky, partner CEO of Shikum Acher from Israel. Shira Yatsan, HR Manager at Alon Tavor Dairy, Tnuva Israel. Two of our other panelists were pre-recorded due to the time difference between Vienna, Israel, and the US and the United States. So from the US, we will host Ms. Jennifer Laszlo Mizrahi, President and CEO of RespectAbility, and Ms. Jennifer Araugo, Peer Support Specialist at Keystone Human Services. Thank you, panelists. Some technical remarks. In the next hour, each panelist will have a short presentation. I hope everyone will keep the time frame. We then have a couple of minutes for Q&A questions. You can send questions through the Q&A box and we will make a huge effort to answer, uh, but we can promise that due to the time frame. Panelists, you can close the cameras. And with no further ado, our first part of the session will be focused on global, uh, on policy, global and state level. And I'm thrilled to welcome Mr. Jürgen Menze, Disability Inclusion Officer in the Gender Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Branch of the International Labor Organization. His responsibilities include the mainstreaming of disability issues into the ILO programming, Develop, development cooperation projects, interna, internal policies and practices, as well as the development and dissemination of disability-specific knowledge products. 
Jürgen will provide us with a global perspective on the session main theme. The mic is your, is your. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liron, and thank you very much, Enosh, for inviting the ILO to this important session. Um, the description of my job sounded very technical, and I am indeed a technical officer. I hope my, my presentation is not too technical. Um, just before talking about um, per person with psychosocial disabilities, uh, a, a few words about the, the employment crisis we're facing right now. Some of you might have seen the latest figures that the ILO published last month, where we estimate that uh, the equivalent of 255 million full-time jobs have been lost due, the, due to the current crisis in the last year alone, and that's approximately four times the number of jobs that were lost due to the financial crisis in 2009. So this is a huge, huge employment crisis. At the same time, of course, it's a huge mental health crisis. But when we look at these figures, oftentimes um, we don't know how many people with disabilities are, are affected by this employment and mental health crisis. So one of the key uh, issues um, we have to advocate for, and we do that obviously also in the ILO, to have all these labor market statistics disaggregated by, by disability and ideally also by the type of disability uh, people have. We know in the context of psychosocial disabilities, it's, it's more difficult, I must say, to, um, to assess that compared to other types of, of uh, disabilities. Um, then just, just the number um, regarding the employment of people with disabilities in general before the crisis, and there we already knew that almost two thirds of people with disabilities in general uh, were outside the labor force. So some of them not even looking for employment. And we can assume, although we don't always have the data, that this is getting worse uh, during this current crisis. So as I said, and as we all know, and that's why we are also here, we know that um, the current crisis is, is also very likely to increase uh, the risk of mental health conditions uh, among the general population, but also for people with, with already pre-existing um, disabilities. And when we talk about a um, uh, person with psychosocial disabilities, people with mental health conditions, we know that one of the biggest barrier we need to tackle is the stigma that we find in, in all societies and in some societies more pronounced than in others. And this is really then the place to say, look, um, if we don't manage to get the stigma out of these discussions, and it's great we have this panel here in the Zero Project Conference because it helps to talk about it, right? At the same time, we have seen that in more and more places, mental health is coming out of the closet, so to say. Uh, it's more talked about, but the question is if everybody, it feels like everybody then has the mental health condition, do people really get the support? they actually need, you know, if, if it's kind of normalized in a way, um, then it, it might entail the risk that, that look, it's, it's a general thing and, and um, Uh, a psychosocial disability from early on, and they might have never get, gotten the opportunity to work or being trained. Um, for, for all stakeholders in the labor market, raising awareness on psychosocial disabilities and the inclusion of people with disabilities in general is, of course, key. And in the ILO, we work um, uh, with governments, we work with uh, trade unions, we work with employers. And with the employers, uh, we have the Global Business and Disability Network, where we have a number of resources on mental health for private sector companies. And we also have a e-learning course, even more important in, in, the, in the age of digital um, inclusion, where employers can learn about it. And one last thing, um, the ILO adopted, well, its constituents, so workers, governments, and employers, adopted back in 2019, the Convention 190, on, the end, on, on ending violence and harassment in the workplace. And this is of course a key issue also for those people with disabilities in general, but particularly people with psychosocial disabilities who are employed 
to be protected against violence and harassment in the workplace. And we have launched a paper uh, that clearly shows that uh, people with psychosocial disabilities are not the perpetrators of violence, but usually are, they are the victims. And that's also something we have to change in the mindset and in, 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 in the public <laughs> display of, of, of uh, people with psychosocial disabilities. So that's it from my side. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jürgen. And I think you highlighted very important uh, points regarding the awareness and social stigma around this issue. Um, I'm happy to share a free recorded video of Jennifer Laszlo Mizrahi. She is the president and CEO of Respectability, a US-based nonprofit organization fighting stigmas and advancing opportunities for people with disabilities. She works with disability organization, national, state, and local, and local policy leaders, media, employers, philanthropists, celebrities, and faith-based organizations in order to expand opportunities for people with disabilities. Mizrahi has submitted testimony on employment for people with disabilities in all 50 US states and at the federal, federal level. I'm happy she joined us to our to our panel with a short and important message. This is Jennifer Laszlo Mizrahi, president of Respectability, a nonprofit organization that fights stigmas and advances opportunities for people with disabilities. One of the most important things that any of us can do is to enable people with mental health conditions to really contribute to making the world a better place. That means jobs, that means volunteer opportunities, and so much more. When we work to enable people with mental health conditions to advance into employment, we've done a lot of public opinion research on what messaging works best. It's very clear that we need to avoid the pity frame and really talk about not how it's a hand out, but how it's a hand up for people with disabilities to have jobs. It's a hand up not only for the individuals who can have the dignity and the income of work, but frankly, it's a hand up for all of society. In America, we're really excited about the poet laureate, Amanda Gorman, an African-American woman with disabilities who gave such a stunning performance at the inauguration of President Biden. But there are also top leaders who have mental health conditions that are wonderful role models for employment. Take the literally richest person on earth, Elon Musk, who's very open about living with mental health conditions, who's concurrently running two incredibly impressive publicly traded companies and is the richest person in the world, a self-made billionaire. It's critical for people with mental health conditions to also be very active in public policy. We need to have access to laws that enable us to have access to online um, medical treatments uh, and therapy um, and telehealth is so very important along with other supports. That happens when allies are active in the political process, when providers such as uh, therapists and, and mental health professionals are active. But the bottom line is that people with disabilities themselves also need to be very active in public policy. I myself have ADHD and I'm living with dyslexia and I'm very active in reaching out to my elected officials and I hope that you will be as well. Run for public office, contact your elected officials. You can do it on Zoom, you can do it by chat or on your phone. Be involved in the political process. It's time for us who are in, in the disability community to take power by changing the paradigm of how people with disabilities are seen and heard. Nothing about us without us is our mantra. We should be at decision-making tables and in employment, not just because it's good for people with disabilities, but because people with disabilities bring so many talents, such strong innovation, loyalty, and results to the workplace. Thank you for all you do. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Jennifer. I hope she's sleeping well in the US now. And now we will turn to the state level perspective with the Israeli case, 
And to highlight the Israeli community-based rehabilitation policies, I'm very happy to introduce you to Ms. Noah Levy, National Coordinator of Vocational Services at the Mental Health Rehabilitation Department in the Israeli Ministry of Health. Noah will provide an overview of the Ministry of Health employment policies for people with psychosocial disabilities. Noah, you are welcome to open the mic and the camera. Good morning. My name is Noah Levy, and I'm very excited to be here. The, the Rehabilitation Act from 2000 is one of the most progressive social and human laws enacted in Israel, as well as one of the most advanced in the entire world. This legislation aims to improve the quality of life and support the recovery and integration of people with psychosocial disabilities in the community. The law provides a basket of services for people over 18 years old. Each service is based upon a rehabilitation program designed by the service user. All of our services are funded and supervised by the government and provided by service providers nationwide. Today, 46,000 people in Israel are getting rehabilitation services in different life areas, as you can see in the slide. Almost half of them are getting vocational rehabilitation services. The vocational services innovative goal is to promote personal employment potential and support service users integration in the job market. We do that by offering a large range of opportunities we developed throughout the years, combining both the occupational skills and recovery process. I will tell you about some of them. First of all, we have intensive vocational rehabilitation services that enable the basic and necessary occupation skills for people who are in a stage where they don't want to be employed in the job market or have too many barriers to do so. We have club houses based on the international model. We operate vocational centers that provide a place to prepare for the job market in a supportive environment. There are unique vocational centers, supportive social business, which enables, oh, sorry. sorry, which enables a, which enables to prepare for current trends in the job market and offer daily contact of service users with the general public through work in coffee shops, book shops, clothing stores, recycling centers, dog walking, etc. In the job market, we have a range of services aimed at giving different levels of support from transitional employment where service users work in the free market with intensive daily support given personally or in small groups to supportive employment, a personal support provided in various work situation when a service user needs light personal support. Special initiatives. Art and crafts are unique services designed for artists and service users who wants to develop their artistic skills and creativity to get income and even prepare them for higher education in art. Business and internship support for people who can run their own business and need financial and rehabilitative support and counseling. Special attention is given to special communities in Israel, such as the religious community. The program we support are designed to integrate religious services users in activities of religion studies that are common in their community. Young adults program in, in Israel, mandatory, mel oh, sorry. In Israel, mandatory military services is the first step to the job market. We work to help young adults get involved as volunteers in the military or civil service programs. That way, we try to prevent their employment exclusion in the, in the future. Policy issues we are exploring and promoting. Integration of people with severe mental disabilities in education that will help them build human capital for integration in quality, meaningful, and more profitable employment. Public awareness and changing perception about people with severe mental illness among the general public, employers, and policy designers. Accessibility in transportation, 
as a key to inclusion, specifically in peripheral communities, and solution for the aging service user population. As our, our society is getting older, and people with psychosocial disabilities are getting older, younger, how can we better shape the services to support service users as they get old? Last but not least, these days we are making tremendous efforts to adapt our services to, re to the reality of Corona epidemic, to ensure that service users do not leave the job market, that service users continue to the routine of vocational activity and do not experience, experience loneliness and despair. That's it. Thank you for listening and have an interesting panel. Thank you, Noah. And another policy perspective is related to how we can monitor and raise awareness of employers to the needs of persons with disabilities. With us now is Dr. Gabi admon Rick, a senior official at the Israeli Ministry of Justice. She is the Director of Research and International Issues at the Commission for Equal Rights of Persons with Disabilities in the Israeli Ministry of Justice. Gabi is involved in the monitoring and reporting on the CRPD implementation in Israel and leads the planning, research, public campaigns, and new media at the Commission. Thank you for joining us, Gabi. The floor is yours. Thank you, Liron. Thank you for that introduction. And I'm very, very happy to be here with you here at this uh, important panel and very, very interesting people. So like Liron said, I'm from the Israeli Commission for Equal Rights of Persons with Disabilities. We work to implement the equal rights law and we're responsible for promoting the CRPD and monitoring its implementation. So we work in very different ways to make Israel more inclusive and accessible so that people with disabilities can enjoy equal rights. We work to promote policies and legislation to raise awareness. And we also we have unique enforcement powers. Each year we receive thousands of complaints regarding discrimination and lack of accessibility and many other problems. And we provide legal assistance to each person individually and help them defend their rights. So for example, uh, we reached a court decision on a very tough case regarding a woman with a psychosocial disability. I'll call her Sarah. Sarah worked for a few years at a kindergarten as an assistant to the preschool teacher. The children and the parents loved her and she got on with the rest of the staff. There were never any complaints about her. One day she accidentally revealed to a co-worker that she was coping with OCD. That same day, the attitude towards her completely changed. Suddenly she was required to bring a psychiatric evaluation saying that she isn't dangerous to the children and she did. She brought this kind of evaluation and then there were all kinds of obstacles until finally she was called to the manager's office and dismissed from her job using all kinds of excuses and explanations that were later refuted at court. So we argued in court that this was unlawful discrimination and we won this case and she received a, a co quite large compensation of 115,000 shekel, it's about 30,000 euros. So it's quite significant. But unfortunately, Sarah's experience isn't unique. We currently have several more cases like this at different stages of this litigation. The employers learn about the psychosocial disability sometimes just by chance, and then they find all kinds of excuses and suddenly announce that there's an additional test or training and that the person, and then the person suddenly doesn't pass it. So similar things happen to all people with disabilities, but we can agree that people with psychosocial disabilities are confronted with the strong, strongest stigma leading to discrimination at the workplace. And there's a lot, a lot of work to be done in this. Uh, so one way to mitigate discrimination is by lawsuits uh, on a case by case basis. But another way is by setting in place laws and policies to promote employment. And I think Noah also spoke about some of the um, services and policies that we have. Another thing is that in 2016, um, the Israeli parliament passed an amendment to the equal rights law that mandates that every public entity that employs more than 100 people will have to work to reach the target of 5% representation of people with disabilities. If they don't reach this target, they have to appoint an employment equality officer and publish an annual plan. Each year, the employers receive an automatically generated indication of the situation in regards to this law, and the information is also publicly published. 
Our commission has enforcement powers to implement the law, and we use it to make sure that all the employers take the necessary steps and employ more people with disabilities. The data shows that the policies have led to a certain improvement during the past years. But like Olga said, of course, the COVID-19 crisis and the restrictions and the financial problems of the last year have impacted the employment of persons with disabilities more than people without disabilities. In a recent survey that we ran, we found that while 59% of the people with disabilities that we asked reported that they were employed in February 2020, only 39% of the same people reported that they were employed in October 2020. So they, a lot of them have left the work market or they temporary, uh, either temporarily or permanently. So these are challenging statistics and we are currently working with all the ministries and Noah described her a very good efforts on this behalf to create policies and programs that will address these challenges and mitigate this impact of COVID. And the last point I wanted to make that, uh, like I said, there's a lot of work to change awareness and make everyone involved in a disability rights perspective. So I wanted to show, share with you our last campaign that's called Opening the Door. We try to convey the message that every one of us can be a, the person that opens the door and removes the barriers for the other. So uh, I'd be happy to show the video. בכל בוקר, כשאני מגיעה לעבודה, אני זוכרת מי הראשון שפתח לי דלת, שראה אותי, ולא רק אדם עם אוטיזם. כשאני יוצא למדריכים והחניכים בקן, אני מתרגש ונזכר במי שפתחה לי דלת, וראתה את היכולות שלי לפני הכל. נכפל פעם, לפני שאני עולה לבמה, אני נזכרת מהראשון שפתח לי דלת, שהקשיב לכישרון שלי וראה מעבר. אחד מכל חמישה אנשים בישראל הוא אדם עם מוגבלות. פיתחו לנו את הדלת, ונצליח בזכות מי שאנחנו. to show us at the end of your presentation. So we came to the second part of the panel in which we will take the policy perspective into the field. We will hear examples of innovative and successful practices that will bring the voice of lived experience, the employer perspective, and the aspect of advanced technologies and innovative supportive services. I'm happy to open this part with my dear colleague and friend, social worker Tal Rokach, professional manager of employment services at ENOSH, the Israeli Mental Health Association. Tal will share ENOSH scalable employment services model for people with psychosocial disabilities. Tal, the floor is yours. Wait a minute. Okay, so uh, thank you, Liron. Thank you, Liron. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here in this panel uh, and I want to introduce you with Enosh Employment Services for Persons with Psychosocial Disabilities. This is Michal. She's in her 30s. When she was a teenager, she suffered from depression. She was in therapy and went on with her life. Three years ago, while working as a secretary, Michal felt like losing control. Michal was going through a mental health crisis in which she had to hospitalize for a few months. Due to the long hospitalization, she also lost her job. When she was feeling better, she started thinking about how she going to reroute herself in the employment journey. She didn't have any routine. She didn't have any schedule. She needed help. Her therapist helped her to begin the process of Sal Shikum, the government health, mental health rehabilitation services. Michal had to start at the rehabilitation committee. She met professionals she didn't know before. She had lots of concerns and was a bit frightened for the position. The committee suggested her to start with the vocational employment center. In her first visit to a vocational employment center in Anosh, 
Michal looked around and she didn't know if that what she was going, she was hoping to see. She was confused. New people working on different projects, packaging, ceramics, sewing works, group talks. Michal decided to give it a chance. She visited the vocational training daily for months. After a while, she felt she had a new start in life. She had a routine and something to look forward to when she get up in the morning. After acquiring some retraining and basic skills in sewing and gaining new social interactions, Michal felt she is ready to begin a new path to prepare to work in the free labor market. She started employment preparing, preparation training. Michal had meetings with her case manager of supportive employment services. She had many fears. What suits to me now? Where do I search? How do I explain my disemployment gap in my CV? The mentors she got in Anosh helped her step up and look for job in the job market. Together, they found a clothes manufacturer that was looking for a dressmaker. She met 10 women behind her sewing machines, walking, talking. She felt she was sewing her new life. She felt better and kept meeting with her supportive employment mentor in Anosh. After two years in the manufacturer, she told her mentor her new dream. I want my, my own business. The employment mentor introduced her with MOF entrepreneurship program where people with psychosocial disabilities get financial mentorship and supportive employment. She started to ask, how do I open my own business? How much money do I need to ask for? How do I find customers? How do I do my finance? And if I will have a mental health crisis, who will help me? And then my off companies helped her in the process. This was a short story for a long period of time of Michal. To zoom out, Michal was going through an employment journey in the Nosh services. We have services that can be stepping stone for people where, where we provide comprehensive ground for recovery and inclusion. We understand that the variety of, of options can be significant to the features of mental health issues. Our programs are scalable depending on the person needs. In Anosh, we believe that the person needs are the center of the work we perform. Michal and people like her are the center of the recovery story. And of all of professionals around her, she helps herself in the recovery journey. In Anosh, we see a holistic picture of persons and work to promote more opportunities for people like Michal through services, advocacy, and awareness. And I want to show some, some uh, little uh, picture, um, a peak of moments in our vocational employment centers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tal. It's, it's amazing to see these achievements of, of us at Enosh. Um, another way to implement better practices is through technology. Uh, with us today is Shachar Sestatsky, partner CEO at Shikum Achel, that will discuss the supportive employment and technological solution they, they are developing. Shachar holds an MBA degree from Tel Aviv University and he's working at Shikum Achel for the past six years. Prior to that, Shachar was working a few years in the market as a marketing manager in an interactive company. And he is also operating a judo school as his second job, which was a surprising detail about him that I learned yesterday. So thank you, Shachar. Are you here with us? Yes, hi. Yes, hi, one second. The floor is yours. The judo, the, the judo is surprising every time. Um, so first of all, thank you very much, and I'm very excited to be here. Um, my name is Shachar, as Ron said, and I'm a co-CEO at Shikum Achel, literally alternative rehabilitation NGO. It for 14 years now had been engaging in advancing person coping with mental disabilities in the field of employment and career development by connecting them to, with the contemporary world of employment and integrating updated and advanced technologies. In the presentation, you can see some photos of our center. I will try to describe the unique initiative activity through the example of one of the people who we serve, Israel. 
the young 20 year old man who following his first mental crisis and at the beginning of his rehabilitation process came to our work it program a unique program that accompanies young people who experienced a mental crisis which led them off track and who were unsuccessful successful in creating a professional identity in this program they undergo a unique process which is entirely focused on occupational and academic guidance when israel began the process he realized that the main obstacle was lack of certainty and lack of guidance regarding his professional future, what he actually wants to do when he grows up. This is, a, this is a question that we encounter time and time again after every mental crisis that the person experiences. We ask him, what do you want to do? Israel Treatment Coordinator suggested that he participate in a course run by Shiku Macher Technological Center and experience a vocational exploration process in a group setting in order to discover himself as a working person. The Technological Center is a unique center in Israel and around the world, which was established for one main reason. There are large gaps between the, between the way a person with disabilities encounter the world of employment and the contemporary world of employment, which is a very dynamic area. These gaps are not addressed by the ordinary tools that existed in the past, not for the normative populations and not for the person with mental disabilities. In the mental health arena, the gaps can at times even increase. On many occasions, people with the mental disabilities experience great difficulty finding a job that will be able to contain the cope with the difficulties that they face, such as perseverance, motivation, working hours, etc. Therefore, many people have settled for low status, simple and temporary jobs. Our goal when establishing the technological center was to change this and to prepare the employee in the best possible way to the world of employment. The COVID-19 crisis has enhanced this phenomenon and this population is one of the populations that has been most severely affected. The Technological Center is initiative in its rehabilitation approach in the way it conveys knowledge and applies elements from contemporary learning principles, such as using gamification, technologies, and more. We understand that it is not enough to only make advanced technological means available to the people we serve, and we have developed process and we have developed process to cope with the fear of such technologies and to increase the use of digital technologies for mobile phones, computers, applications, and more. The technological center serves as a place for group meeting and combines the technological and emotional group learning experience. This way, Israel and his peers can explore an environment that simulates employment in the contemporary employment market can experiment with VR technologies, which provide skills and abilities analysis. The systems know how to give a personal output, which contains various parameters, which help and give guidance, and can use occupational development simulators, simulations and training in the computerized hub, all in a safe and protected manner with the group support and personal professional rehabilitation accompaniment. As I said, these complicated, complicated times had highlighted the various gaps between many population groups, and those most, most affected during the COVID-19 crisis are excluded populations and populations that are underrepresented, which often have limited access to digital technology. This in turn possess great limitation on the vocational prospect. Therefore, we develop an additional tool to reduce these gaps, box it, first to develop various levels of technological and digital tools that are geared to the contemporary employment market. Additional solutions that we are working on our mobility and reaching the entire population regardless of the geographic location. We have converted courses to distance learning formats, which include experimental learning alongside personal component as well as system for monitoring learning process. Through the brief explanations that I have given, I believe that the main goal that we all face is to think about how we can, in an optical, optimal, proper and efficient manner, integrate more people with disabilities in the employment market particularly in the current world employment, which has significantly changed due to the COVID-19 crisis. This is an opportunity for us to make updated, adapted technologies accessible and available to the population that we serve in order with them to reintegrate into the employment market with respected and rewarding jobs. And if you are asking what happened with this style, well, Israel successfully completed the course after drawing himself our own career map and after working on the main skills that he wanted to achieve. And he joined our supported employment program and found his first job with a strong sense of self-efficiency and with a much broader range of opportunities available to him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sahar. 
Um, I now want to um, move to another pre-recorded video, um, which uh, highlights that today more than ever, the mental health field understands the importance of lived experience. So I'm happy to introduce you through a pre-recorded video to Ms. Jennifer Araugo, Certified Peer Support Specialist at Keystone Human Services, a global provider of services and support for people with intellectual disability, autism, and psychosocial disability, headquartered in the USA. Jennifer was medically retired from the United States Marine Corps after serving 14 years when she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. She started her recovery journey four years ago with support she received through the Veterans Hospital Rehabilitation Center in Pennsylvania. Jennifer earned her peer support specialist certification in 2019 and began working for Keystone Human Services in 2020, which she says has changed her life. She will share a small slice of her personal recovery and employment journey through her experiences with the mental health system and Keystone. So we will watch the video now. Thank you, Laron. Thank you for having me here today. And thank you for having me on the panel. I'd like to share a little bit about my story. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And at this time, I was in the military. So when I ended up getting diagnosed with that, the military ends up doing a medical board because you can no longer be in the military when you have bipolar disorder. And um, that was really hard for me because I knew that that was it for me. And I loved being Marine more than anything in the world. So I went through years of just, you know, depression and, and, and mania, just feeling like, how do I heal from all of this? And it wasn't until I went to the VA hospital here in the United States, and um, it was a certified peer support specialist that really helped me and encouraged me and told me, you know what, I see something in you. And I was going to school for psychology because that's what I love. I love helping people. And he said, you would make a really good peer support specialist. And two years later, I took the certification and Keystone was there. And um, I loved everything that the company had to say and what they stood for. And a couple months later, I applied and um, I've never looked back. Um, my job as a certified peer support specialist is to help uh, peers along their recovery. Um, I'm not just, you know, I'm not their friend. I am their peer. So I empathize with them. I am with life experience. So I have mutuality. I have, um, I, I walk that walk with them. I encourage them to have self-advocacy, to have empowerment. I set goals with them that are attainable. And I work with them on wellness tools. I work with them on a wrap, a wellness recovery action plan. And I help them do these things. And I encourage them to get back into the workforce because employment is so important. It's so important for your mental health. And I've learned that for me, it's what's helped me with my recovery. So, so many of the peers that I work with want to get back into the workforce. Some of the barriers that we face and challenges that we face with employment are with appointments or, you know, taking off. Um, those with psychosocial disabilities or, or anyone in general, having to take time off is just frowned upon. And I think that that's just so unfair. Because um, when we are 100% well, then we, we're giving 100% of ourselves to our employers. And when you get 100% of your employee, you're getting the very best. So it's a win-win for the employer and for the employee. Employment is so important because it's got to be all-inclusive, not just for those with psychosocial disability, but for everyone. It's got to be inclusive for everyone so that everyone in the workforce can thrive. Thank you, Jenny. And for our last but not least speaker of the day, 
I'm very excited to welcome Ms. Shira Yatskan, HR Manager at Alon Tavor Dairy at Intnuva, Israel. Shira is working in Intnuva, Israel's largest food manufacturer since 2011. In the past four years, she is the HR Manager of Alon Tavor Dairy, the largest and most advanced dairy in the Middle East, employing 450 workers and utilizing machines. Of technology. She is also responsible for the diversity and inclusion employment and also has a close relationship with the disability field as a family member. I can say that Nuva is a dear partner of Enosh, and I'm happy Shira agreed to discuss the employment perspective on the importance of inclusion in the lab on inclusive labor market. Thank you, Shira. Hi everyone and good morning. My name is Shira and I'm very happy and excited to be here today to discuss this important subject. For the past four years, I have been the HR manager of Alon Tavor Dairy, one of Nova's factories. From my personal experience, it is a very special and unique dairy and I'm honored to tell you our achievements. Nova was established in 1926 and has become the largest and the leading food group in Israel. Five million products are delivered daily to about 13,000 direct customers. 32 of the most advanced production R&D and logistics centers nationwide and 6,000 employees. Nova has three business lines, the dairy division, the food division, and the international division. In every home, on every table, in every meal in Israel, Nova is there. Alon Tavor Dairy was established in 2003 and has become the largest and most advanced dairy line in the Middle East, employing 450 workers, and utilizing cutting edge machinery and processes means we are at the forefront of technology. Our diverse workforce reflects Nova's core value-based agenda. In Alon Tavor, among other Nova sites, we are putting a lot of effort in creating diversity and inclusion in the workplace. As shown in the slide, please see the diversity of the workforce of Alon Tavor Dairy. For example, 20% of the workers are from the Arab society. Another example is 18% of management positions are held by women. In December 19, the dairy hosted the president of Israel. His visit was a sign of appreciation for our contribution to the vast activity into Arab society employment. It was also a big honor for us. Additionally, seven employees of the dairy are with psychosocial disabilities. One of our most important cooperation is between Alon Tavor Dairy and the Nosh Association. There are two channels of cooperation. The first one is employment. Three of the seven employees with psychosocial disabilities are supported by Enosh. It takes a lot of managerial attention and adaptation to accommodate these employees. Being a factory in an intensive operational environment cannot make any compromise on this worker's safety. So managers need to pay good attention and support them daily. These days, dealing with the constraints of the COVID-19 has forced the dairy to make some changes for these employees, such as working hours, wages, and transportation. The other cooperation is yogurt cups being donated by the dairy, so Enosh participants can convert them into flower pots for sale. I will illustrate my point with short case study. Meet Mr. G. He's working in Nova for 10 years as line operator. He got married four years ago and was supported by Enosh until two years ago. 
G's complete integration in the dairy has provided him with stability, a sense of belonging to a large, well-known company, and a sense of empowerment. Meet Ilan. Ilan is working in Nuva for 18 years as logistic manager. His team includes three employees with psychosocial disabilities. Each one is at a different level and has different needs. By including these employees in his team, Ilan has developed managerial skills such as better communication and empathy and has gained an extra sense of satisfaction. Therefore, the main conclusion is inclusive employment is all about win-win situation for both employer and employee. I really believe that as, as, that as HR managers, we have the obligation to promote diversity of people with different abilities. It is definitely in our hands to create labor market with zero barriers. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Sira, uh, and to all panelists. Um, I'm, I'm very proud that we, uh, we had kept the time uh, so that now we will have a few minutes to reflect and answer questions. I'm inviting all panelists to open cameras so I won't be here all alone. Um, thank you. Um, and I, 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 would, I will take some of the questions. We will also open the chat to your comments and reflections, um, but also we'll take some of the Q&A that uh, were, uh, were, ad were addressed in the, in the box during the panel. Um, but first I want to ask you, Jürgen, uh, from the International Labor Organization, if you have any practical tools to employers um, that, that they can use uh, in the daily work to include more people with disabilities. Thank you very much, Liron. Um, so in the ILO, we are facilitating the global business and disability network. Obviously, it works on all kinds of um, people with all kinds of disabilities. But we realize that the, the topic of mental health in general, including people with psychosocial disabilities, is gaining more and more importance for employers because they also realize that there's a huge cost if we don't address um, mental health issues and if we don't manage to include people with psychosocial disabilities. Um, I mentioned in my presentation that some might never had the chance to work, but we also know that very high performing professionals are more likely actually to, to um, develop psychosocial disabilities, mental health issues. So in terms of tools, um, please uh, check out our website businessanddisability.org where we have a section on mental health at work. Um, it has all the resources, more than 120 resources. Um, it has a self-assessment tool on mental health for specifically for companies. So companies see where they're already performing well and where they have gaps to include um, mental health issues in their policies and practices. And in addition to, to these resources and the self-assessment, we have an e-learning course. And um, all of this is structured along um, a six big area or five big areas. It's a combating stigma, it's training managers, providing reason, um, reasonable accommodation, how to deal with return to work of people who have developed mental health conditions, and then the actual employment of persons with severe mental health conditions or with psychosocial disabilities. So it's all on the website, please have a look. And we are always happy to, to uh, be in touch, to find the call, the contact details on the website to businessanddisability.org. Thank you. Thank you, Jürgen. And there was a question, an interesting question, I think, in the chat, in the Q&A box about how, uh, from Eli Mugabui Shema, and he's asking about if we can share the Israel experience with partnership and coordination among government, civil society, and private sector in the implementation of, of these policies. So if anyone wants to, to reflect on this question, I can say something. Um, I think we we are trying to uh, work together. I mean, we are meeting all the time with other um, um, with all the um, 
service providers service providers yes yeah, service providers and also with the users uh, service users and also other uh, department in the palm in the government in order to think what we want to promote and how we want to do it when to when we want to launch an, a new um, service we always go to the uh, service users and the also families and also all the uh, service providers and we ask them uh, to um, um, what they want, what they need, what they want and how we can um, be more accurate in our um, um, giving. Uh, yeah, in the policy, with the policies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the policies. Yes. Okay.